And many times when we step into this arena wanting to go forth in progress, sometimes we do not realize or want to accept or will not expect that there will be a time when we will run into some storms. That's right. Not only will we encounter some storms, but we will encounter the unexpected. The text teaches us a marvelous lesson in the life of Pastor Peter, where in the midst of his ministry, his work, and his service, uh, now Peter finds himself in a very strange and peculiar situation. It's interesting in this 14th chapter of Luke that Matthew rather helps us because he unfolds, first of all, the beheading of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is killed. He dies in chapter number 14. Jesus, immediately after, he takes time to heal the sick. Yes, sir. Yes, Healing sir. the sick is very important. And my brothers and sisters, I need to remind some of us that God is still a healer. Yes, he is. Uh, John the Baptist has been beheaded. Jesus moves and shows his compassion. He heals the sick. Then he meets a multitude in this 14th chapter, and he takes time to feed them. There's a miracle that takes place uh, between verse number 19 and verse 21 that we're all familiar with, where Jesus takes two fish and five loaves of bread and feeds a multitude of 5,000. Immediately after Jesus feeds this multitude of 5,000, the Bible says that he isolates himself from his disciples and he goes up into a mountain to be alone and to spend time with his father in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if Jesus' church would take time to remove himself from the fame, remove himself from the multitude and the crowds, and get away with his father in prayer, surely you and I should have some quiet time. Any of you look forward to quiet time? Any of you ever look forward to the time when no one is calling your name? Help me somebody. There's some wives that look forward to quiet time. Y'all talk back to me. Uh, when their husbands are not asking, what are we going to eat? There's some husbands that look forward yes, to quiet time. There's some mothers that look forward to quiet time when their children are not hollering, Mom, where yes, are you? Uh, there's some fathers that look forward to yes, quiet sir. time uh, when their sons are not searching or stalking them. Quiet time is important. Jesus takes this time, goes up into the mountain, gets alone and he prays with his father. Uh -huh. He's alone and he prays with his father. Uh, but in the midst of this happening, the, the Bible says uh, strange things begin to happen because uh, the multitude, the, the disciples, uh, after Jesus goes away to pray, uh, the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Don't miss this, that they are on the, the Sea of Galilee. They are on the Sea of Galilee, and the sea is being tossed with waves, and the wind was contrary. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says uh, this in Matthew. The Bible says uh, that it was in the fourth watch of the night, right. and Jesus uh, went unto them, and he was walking on the sea. Jesus is walking on the sea. It's a miraculous miracle within itself because he is walking on the water. Uh, the same waters that his father created, the son is now walking on them. Uh, the same waters uh, that you and I would look at in fear and panic, Jesus is now walking on it. And now, my brothers and sisters, what blessed me is that if Jesus can walk on the sea, 
What blessed me is that that taught me that if he can walk on water, he can walk on our troubles. If he can walk on water, he can walk through our storms. If he can walk on water, Jesus can teach you and I that there are some things that not only can we walk on, we can walk through. And some of us have learned that some of our greatest battles, when we put them in the master's hand, he turns battles into blessings. Not only does he turn battles into blessings, but he turns battles into breakthroughs. Jesus is walking on the water. Can I tell somebody today, your biggest fear, you can begin to get ready to walk on it. Your massive assignments and your major work and your movements that have you hindered and having you living in fear. I came to tell you this morning that Jesus is teaching you how to walk on it. I've discovered that there's some things that we face in life, my brothers and sisters, and where we don't know how to handle. What we need to learn how to do is put some church on it. Wherever you're at, just say, put some church on it. What, what am I saying when I say put some church on it? Put some Jesus on it. Help me somebody. Instead of you wanting to slap them, put some Jesus on them. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. Uh, put some Jesus on the situation and Jesus knows how to turn it around or work it out for your good. It's in the fourth watch and the disciples, the Bible says, they see something. They, they get the opportunity. These men who have been trained by Jesus, have sat at the feet of Jesus, have, have been taught by Jesus, they now see their teacher walking on the water. They, they, they see the one that just fed a multitude of 5,000, had them to sit down in companies of 50, break bread and taught them, and now he's walking on the water. What I love about Jesus is that he can multitask better than any of us. There's some of us that can multitask. Y'all talk back to me. There's some mothers that, that can yeah. cook and while they're cooking they have a load of clothes in the washing machine y'all yeah. talk back to me not only that they're sweeping and mopping at the same time helping somebody there's some people that can't multitask y'all talk back to me they they just have to focus on that one thing y'all talk back to me if they don't get that one thing right they can mess up everything they can't have a pot of green zone y'all talk back to me and be on the computer y'all help me in here uh they they will mess something up if the cornbread won't come out right y'all talk back to me in here they can't uh, feed a baby and then have a pot on the stove help me somebody it will drive them crazy y'all talk back to me in here to have to change a light bulb and hear a baby crying at the same time there are some people that can multitask. Y'all talk back to me. Jesus was able to multitask. And I'm so glad that he can be out walking on the water on the Sea of Galilee and still be able to heal somebody in their house. Y'all talk back to me. Aren't you glad that God that we serve has a son that is a multitask savior? What I love about him, he's multitasking. He, he can be at Rayford Prison and then be down at South Florida Prison. Uh, he can multitask. He, he can be with an inmate that, that is in Stark, Florida and then be with an inmate in Homestead. Y'all help me today. Uh, he can be at Jackson North and then be at Jackson, Maine and still, still be with a family of a loved one in Mount Sinai in surgery and then still be moving down at Baptist Hospital. He's a God that can be all, and I forgot, while he's at the hospitals and while he's at the prisons, he's in your exam with you. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. He's going from question one to question five to question ten. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, he's on your job while he's at Baptist and Mount Sinai and Jackson North and Jackson, Maine and at Rayford and Stock Prison and at Homestead Prison. He's also in corporate America.
America while you're dealing with your wicked and mischievous supervisor. He's around your desk with a perimeter protecting you. Oh, and I forgot to remind you, he's with your son and your daughter while they're in school, in day school, in Broward school. Oh, and I need to remind you, he's with your child in Washington, D.C., in New York, and in a foreign city. Oh, and I need to remind you, he's with sons and daughters on foreign soil fighting in battles. The same God can be everywhere. He, he's the one that gave them the idea of Minister Mike to invent the store called 7-Eleven open 24-7. He's a God that can be anywhere at all times and, and never have to close for a new inventory to come in. He's there to work the shipments as they arrive. He's the one that can look at you when you are depressed and tell you about your depression without you having to get a prescription. He's the one that can lighten up your heavy load when your head is down and I need to remind somebody that's watching this morning when you're down, God can lift you up. Can I tell somebody in a season of dilemma and depression that the same God that was with you when you were up is the same God that will be with you when you're down. The same God that opened up blinded eyes is the same God that can heal a hurting heart. Was there in every area? Yes, sir. Uh, he's walking on the water. Snapshot of Jesus. He's just walking on the water. The disciples have zeroed in on their instructor that is walking on the water. Yes, sir. He's walking. He's He's, he's, he's walking on the water and the disciples were troubled saying, you know, uh, this must be a spirit and they cried out in fear. Uh, the same man who had instructed them and taught them is now walking on the water and the disciples are amazed, they're in awe uh, because uh, they think that this is a spirit and they become spooked by what has taught them. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And the one who has been with them and now they are beginning to look in a little fear because he's walking on the water. Uh, Jesus, we've been with you when you turned two fish and took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed a multitude of 5,000. Uh, we were hanging out on the ice skirts, you know, when you came came by the Sea of Galilee and picked up three boys that were fishermen by trade and told them to follow you. And now, Jesus, um, we, we, we failed with the man who had the son that was possessed with a demonic spirit and we could not cast him out. But we've never seen you walk on water. Perhaps there's somebody here today uh, that, that you, you, you know the history of Jesus. You know some things that Jesus has done. And you've read enough Bible. you got enough book in you and enough Bible in your spirit. Uh, but there's some things that every now and then Jesus will pop up and perform a miracle that will blow you away. I want to have about five witnesses. Um, this morning that you know you just didn't know it was going to go down like that. You just didn't know that God was going to move like that. You had seen it move for others different ways and, and now God moves for you. Uh, can I remind somebody today to make a footnote for by November 30th, God's going to do something that you did not expect God to do, that you didn't want to know that it could happen the way God would allow it to happen. God is a strange and unusual God. The way God blesses one may be totally different from the way that God will bless another. But they look and they are in fear because Jesus is walking on the water. And the Bible says, and Jesus begins to speak to them. Thank you, Lord. He speaks to them. They, 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 they need to hear his voice. Yep. Uh, they, they, they need to know that it's Jesus. Have you ever been in the home by yourself? You hear a noise, help me somebody. And you call out out of expectation of who you expect it to be. Y'all yeah. ain't gonna help me yeah. up here. Yeah. Uh, because if you don't hear that voice, if you hear a strange voice, help me somebody. 
And I forgot to tell you, your phone is dead. Help me somebody. So you will not be able to dial 911. Help me somebody. Somebody please dial 911. Help me somebody. And, and, and you, you can't factor the voice right off the bat. Jesus teaches us. He says, there's encouragement. He says to the disciples, he says to them, he says, be of good cheer. What blessed me about the text, women of God, is that uh, Jesus gives the invention to women like Maya Angelou. Wow. Jesus gives uh, the invention to sisters like Helen Stein. Mm. He gives uh, the invention because he writes one of the first Hallmark cards. Uh, Somebody got to get the text. I got it. Yes, he says, be of uh, Good cheer. It's one thing. It's one thing when it's somebody's birthday or anniversary uh, to put some money in their hand. But it's another thing when you go and you purchase a car. And many times when we purchase cars, help me somebody. Uh, those that are really into purchasing the proper cards will read a few cards with that individual in mind. They try to find a card that is fitting for that individual. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're, now, now what I've discovered, i discovered this new generation, and this side, y'all come a little closer. This side, vacant, y'all still come a little closer. Can I talk to the vacant? Help me somebody. Can I talk to the empty for about 22 seconds? What I've discovered is that you do not find the words that you're really looking for in a 99 cent car. Yeah. I got it, I got it, Lord, don't me preach this thing. Uh, uh, you, 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 you need a card sometime that is $5.99 and $6.99, help me somebody, to be able to give a full expression of how you feel about that individual. And then you begin to count your brown pennies and you begin to say, now, if the card is $5.99, then that means um, I was going to put $25 in the card, but now I got to do my mathematics of elementary school and I got to subtract $5, help me somebody, and the tax. And now I'm only going to be able to put $18 in the car, help me somebody, because I really don't, y'all ain't gonna help me preach this, and, and, and because I really wanted to give it a certain amount, but if the car costs that, cards symbol or give a symbolic symbol of a sacrifice. You made a sacrifice to pull in CBS, you made a sacrifice to pull into Walgreens, you made a sacrifice. But then if you're gifted and creative, help me somebody. There you, go. you can get a blank card and if your vocabulary is strong enough and your language is sincere enough. I wish I had about 15 witnesses. I, 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 I wish I had about six and I'll make seven. And you can be again to engrave, help me somebody, and write the expressions from your own heart how you feel about them. And I just want to be able to tell you, help me somebody, that I admire you and I respect you. Help me somebody. There's some words you will put in bold print to properly be able to express how you feel about the individual help me somebody and then after you attach the words to it then you will attach a few dollars to it but Jesus says be a good cheer he encouraged some disciples that had become uh, fearful and afraid and, and, and he says to them be a good cheer and that's what I came to tell somebody that head may be down this morning and somebody that has hit a duckling season in your walk with God. And that is be a good cheer. Why be a good cheer, Pastor? Because it is I. That's what Jesus said to them. He, he says, he says, don't panic. Don't get afraid. It's I. It's it is I. It is it is Jesus, your Savior, the one who is able to change and turn your life around. Be not afraid. It is I. Yeah. Immediately after Jesus says, "It is I," that curious Peter. Everybody have one curious student. 
every parent has at least yes, sir. one curious child. Mm -hmm. That that ambitious Peter. Uh -huh. Y'all talk back to me. Somebody may say, well, what about me, Pastor? That ambitious Peter Lena. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. Yeah, that that ambitious Paulette, help me somebody. Uh, he sees Jesus, and there's, there's always going to be a child that want to see what Jesus is doing. But there's also going to be that curious child. And they don't have to have big eyes. Y'all talk back to me in here. They're just curious. That they're always going to want to do what they see daddy do. Lord, help me preach this. There's, there's, there's going to be one child that's always going to cling to what daddy is doing and want to help what when daddy is doing. It. And sometimes it may be a son that want to go outside and work with their daddy when their daddy's working. But every now and then there's a daughter that don't want to be a house daughter. Y'all ain't going to help me. If she sees her daddy outside with a shovel, help me somebody. She's going to put on her shoes. Y'all talk back to me. And she's going to go stand close by daddy. And one at one point, she's going to say, daddy, let me try. I wish I had a witness in here. If daddy's working on the car, she's going to be the one that wants to learn about the various wrenches and the sockets to be able to work and help daddy. She doesn't want, matter of fact, there's some girls that grow up just don't want to be around other girls because they connect early that girls can cause problems. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. And so they hang more with their daddy. Help me somebody. Their daddy's girl by birthright. Their daddy's girl by life rights. Their daddy girl for life. Help me somebody. There's some girls, even when daddy is wrong, they still with daddy. Help me somebody. Don't talk about my daddy. My daddy may be a drunk. My daddy may be a gambler. My daddy may be a whore. Help me somebody. But he's Y'all ain't gonna help me preach this. Uh, he's, he's my daddy. Uh, I may have to help him pay bills, but he's just daddy all by his self. I, I love daddy. Peter! <laughs> sees Jesus. Yeah. He's walking, Donald. He's, yeah. He sees Jesus and ambitious Peter says to Jesus after he realizes that is Jesus a Peter answered him and said Lord I tell you what if it really be you yes, sir. Yeah. out there walking on the water yeah. uh -huh. can we dramatize it if, if that's really you you are who you say you are. Uh -huh. Bid me the invitation to come out there where you are. Yes, sir. Good God of man. I told you last Sunday and I'll tell you again, be careful what you ask for. Yep. Lord have mercy. Let me preach again to the vacant pews and some of you in your homes. Be, be careful what you ask for. Then I told you last week, be careful who you ask for. Yep. But then I need to remind you and give you a third one this week. Uh, be careful where you ask to go. Somebody got to get this. Lord, help me preach this. I, I feel the heat from your home and I'm not even there. Uh, be careful where you ask to go. Have you ever said, I want to go with you? Help me. Wherever you go, I'll go. Come in. Wherever you be, I'll be. Whatever you go through, I'll go through. It reminds me of the footprints of the father and son. You remember the story of the son. The father's working outside in the snow. Uh, he has uh, this steps every time he takes his step. His son uh, puts on a pair of his shoes, uh, his daddy's shoes. The son is a size 9, the daddy is a size 12, and the son begins to step into the steps of the father, and the son cries out, 
when he's walking in the steps of his father, the son says, Daddy, I'm walking in your footsteps. The daddy begins to think about his past and he says, oh no, son, somebody got it already. Don't walk in my footsteps. My, my footsteps are murdered. My footsteps are, are messy. But what the father could not explain at the time was that the same God that gave him Murray and gave him messy footsteps and marked and messed up was the same God that could turn those footsteps of a mess into a miracle. And I need to remind somebody that God is still working miracles. Uh, if you are who you are, yeah, yeah. let me come hang out where you are at. You're walking on the water, and I'm an ambitious Peter. You know, I was told, go after what you want. Go for it. Help me somebody. Peter gets out. The text says, Jesus says one word to Peter. He doesn't give Peter the full description of the job of what's going to happen when he get out there. You applied for the position, you applied for the work, but nobody really told you the entanglements or the trials or what would come with the title. Y'all yeah. going to help me preach yeah. this. Nobody really told you that you would face some obstacles. Uh, you accepted the church as the pastor. Nobody told you that the same demonic demons that voted you in would be the same ones that would come up against you. When the honeymoon is over, nobody told you after the settlement of the marriage and the papers are now filed in the courts, you are married. Nobody told you that there would be a day when you know, you, you would stop looking at each other, smiling. And your smiles would turn to growls. Nobody told you, help me somebody. You, 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 you heard mama talking about it when she would write out her bills on the back of the FPNL bill. Y'all talk back to me. You, you, you thought mama was just working on her manuscript. Help me somebody. And now life has brought you. I'm sorry, this, you know, my HP computer net technology. I see my ITs looking. Help me somebody. Trying to remind me that we don't write on the back of paper no more. Help me somebody. But can I get one old school son that can say, I still feel it. Help me somebody. And, 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 and nobody told you that there would be a day when the honeymoon would be over and, and you used to live off love and now you need some love to be attached to the money help me somebody because FPNL reminded you help me somebody that they don't accept love for a payment uh, GM Financial reminded you uh, that we don't accept love help me somebody for a payment uh, Kiss Like and Countrywide and Wells Fargo reminded Reminded you when you come asking for an extension, you say, I just got married. They said, I apologize, but we don't give a moratorium on marriage. Help me, somebody. You got to make your payments. When the honeymoon is over, you got to deal with the reality. Come real quick, let me talk to the housewives of Miami Gardens. Come real quick, let me talk to the housewives of Opalaka in Liberty City. Oh, I forgot my housewives of Miramar and Miami Lakes. Help me somebody. And my bougie Pembroke Pines. Y'all talk back to me for a moment. Every now and then, you can have a reality show in your own house. The text says this. Jesus says to Peter one word that has multiple attachments. He just says, come, Lord help me preach this. I wish I had about seven and I'll make eight for a new beginning. All he says is, come. Get out, get out the boat and come to where I am, Peter. And, and, and Peter being ambitious, the Bible says, 
Peter does something. Uh, Peter comes down out of the ship. First thing I need to remind somebody today is that on this 20th day of September, you're getting ready to come down out of depression. You're getting ready to come out of down out of low self-esteem. You're getting ready to come down out of pain. Lord, help me preach this. You're getting ready to come down out of loneliness. You're getting ready to come down out of hurt. Your past hurt, your past pain, your past disappointment. You're getting ready to come down out of it because God is getting ready to walk you into something new. Somebody ought to give God a prayer right there. I attach a decree and a declare that somebody is getting ready to walk into their entrepreneurship because they're getting ready to come down out of. Somebody is getting ready to walk into their Celestial scholarship years because they're getting ready to come down out of. Somebody is getting ready to walk out of bills and tuitions are getting ready to be paid because they're getting ready to come down out of. Oh, Peter! You got to give him credit because Peter comes down out of the ship. And when he comes down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He's walking. Somebody in your home just say, walk it out. He, he's walking. He's walking on the water. He, his, his destination is to get to Jesus. He's walking. I wish I had time to deal with this. He's, he's walking. He's walking on the water. He's just walking to Jesus. But whenever we're trying to do more and accomplish more, there's always going to be a it. There's always going to be an it. There's always going to be somebody that's going to try to come between us and our destination. He's walking. He's walking on the water. The Bible has already said a few verses up that the waves and the winds were contrary. Yes, sir. And Peter, Peter, you know, wanted to go out there to where Jesus is. Peter allows, the Bible says, when he saw the wind bliss stories, yeah. he's walking. Peter, it's the same wind that was bliss stories a few verses up. When it says the waves were contrary. When Peter saw the wind. My God. Let, me, let me help somebody before I wrap this up. I know we are out of time but not out of text. Watch this. Some things we won't see until we get out there. Yep. Lord help me somebody. Yes, some things we, we you know, there, there are some people say, you know, if I was in your position, I'd do it totally different, and it'd be much better, you know. The Napoleon mentor mindset, you know, if, if I was where you were at, I would do it 10 times better than you. I would change things. People wouldn't be the way they are. People wouldn't act the way they are. You know, if, if I had that man, you know, he'd be a better man. You'd have messed him up for life. Help me somebody. Y'all come a little closer. If I had that woman, you know, she'd be better off. You know, she wouldn't need a perm. Help me somebody. She wouldn't need, uh, you know, to look the way she looked with. If I had her, she would have on high heels. Y'all talk back to me. No, if you had her, it wouldn't be like that. If you you had him, it wouldn't be like that. Help me, somebody. You don't know what you're getting into until you get out there. He's walking. He sees the blistorious wind. And when he receives the blistorious wind, he becomes afraid. Peter becomes so afraid. The Bible says, until he began to sink. And when Peter begins to sing, uh -huh. 
This is what I wanted to get to. Some of us, my brothers and sisters, we were sinking. Yep. Yep. But I need about 15 of you in your homes that can say, I thank God that when I was sinking, uh -huh. that my God reached way down and he picked me up. Peter was sinking. He was seeking to rise no more. Yeah. But I need you to see Peter's cry. Because there's somebody here today that has a cry. Uh -huh. And your cry is, is that you believe in God to heal your body. Yes, I need to remind you that God is a healer. Uh -huh. Have I got about 10 witnesses in the room that know that God is a healer? Somebody is crying today, God, deliver me. And I need to remind you that God is a deliverer. Yeah. Yes, God will reach way down and God will pick you up. Yeah. Peter began to sink and when Peter began to sink, the Bible says that Peter says, Lord, save me. And I came to tell somebody today that God is a saver. Yeah. That God is a God that will save you. God is a God that will heal you. And God is one that will deliver you. He cried out in the master's terminology, Lord, save me because I'm out here. I wanted to come to where my Jesus was, but I allowed the wind to distract me. And I came to tell somebody there's something that has happened in your life. And all it was was a mysterious wind. God allowed it to come not to take you out, but God allowed it to come to grow you up. Have I got a witness here? God allowed it to come to teach you how to trust Him in turbulent times. And the Bible says that Peter said, Lord, save me. And when he began to cry out, Jesus reminded him by saying, Oh, thou of little faith, wherefore did thy doubt? And you know what Jesus did. The Bible Bible says, and when they were coming to the ship, the Bible says that the wind ceased. All I'm trying to tell you is that God sent the test not to destroy you, but to teach you that you're going to have some stormy days. You're going to have some gusty winds. You're going to have some turbulent storms. But if you learn how to keep your eyes on Jesus, you may go down, but you won't go out, because God will reach way down and lift you up. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you for lifting me up. Peter's cry. Come on, on that note, with just a few moments left, we extend the invitation Somebody can tune in today. Peter's cry. Your cry. Unto God. You need Jesus. Salvation is of the Lord. You may call in at 305 762 9623. Let's pray. Turn to God, we thank you now. For salvation. We thank you for saving us. I pray God that there's somebody that can call in today. That needs salvation. That needs a relationship with you. That needs to be saved. Draw them nigh unto thee. Bless now. In Jesus name I pray for salvation. In Jesus name. Amen. We prepare for Sunday school. 9.30, our adult class. At 9.30, our adults will meet.
virtual at 930. And then our youth, for the first time, our youth will meet virtual today at 12 noon. I encourage all parents to have your sons and your daughters to tune in with their teachers at 12 noon today for virtual teaching of Sunday school. Please, today at 12 noon, and our adults this morning at 9.30, and also we pray that you will join in on Sunday or Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. for the study of God's word. God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. It's worship time in giving. Please prepare to give your tithe, your offering, your love gifts, whether you're giving online or in the app. Thank you for your obedience in giving over this week, whether it's through the mail. Give with the spirit of joy. Let's prepare to worship in giving. Let's prepare to keep in mind our upcoming events in the month of October. And let's prepare to trust God and take him at his word. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for these precious moments. We thank you for your people. I pray, God, that you will keep us in thy love and tender care. Bless now. Favor, glory, and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. May the grace of our Lord.